Hello internet and in this video we are going to be looking at wet blending. Wet blending is one of the blending techniques you see painters using to achieve a smooth transition between colours without having to spend hours doing it. In this video we will look at how to do it and perhaps more importantly when you should use it. Also before we get onto the main topic I can see that only a small percentage of the people that view my channel are actually subscribed. So if you enjoy my videos and wouldn't mind seeing more of them appear in your subscription feed, perhaps consider subscribing. It is after all free and you can unsubscribe at any point you wish. So what is wet blending? Wet blending is a painting technique in which you blend the transition between two colours of paint on the miniature whilst they are still wet, rather than creating separate layers or using a technique like stippling or glazing. Let's dive straight into an example. Here we can see a 50mm base that I have primed. The two colours I'm going to use for this example is orange and red. Now the colour choice can be quite important. As orange derives from red, mixing the two will just create a darker orange. However, if I were to try and wet blend blue and yellow, the point where the paints blend together would quickly become green. So unless you want to create a third colour in your blends, always pick colours that are next to each other on the colour wheel. The basic principles of wet blending are laying two colours next to each other and smudging the border between the two to create a blend. On this base I paint half of the disc red and half orange. As you can see the paint is pretty thin but that is okay as I intend to do multiple layers. It is important to wash your brush in between applying each colour so that each side has a clean version of the base colours. To start the wet blending you want to move the paint from one side into the other by using a horizontal movement. Going left to right rather than up and down means that one colour is crawling into the new space rather than pulling the other colour back into the original area. This would result in a centre column of paint that is just mixed rather than blended. You see here that the blend is by no means perfect and whilst I could just cut to the final result, I think it's important to show you that I'm not getting this right straight away. For me, wet blending is a technique that you really should test a few times on a base like this to get a good understanding of how it works before doing it on your miniatures. As we're using acrylic paints, they will start to dry relatively quickly. As soon as it starts to happen, take a step back and let it dry. Otherwise, you will start dragging partly dried pigments about on the surface and this will create an unwanted texture. In order to give ourselves more time on the surface, it is important to thin your paints, as it will take longer to dry. This does however mean that just like I'm doing here, you may have to apply multiple coats, depending on how the miniature is primed. I personally think doing multiple layers can help to ensure a smoother blend, as the various layers kind of bleed together and layer up to create a smoother end result. So how about using it on an actual miniature? When wet blending on my own miniatures, I almost always use this technique as a base to build up texture on top of. On this Space Marine Lieutenant, I'm going to use Mephiston Red by Citadel and Purple by Vallejo. I've picked these colours for two reasons. The first being that purple derives from red and will therefore blend nicely. Secondly, the purple will take up the majority of the cloak, which complements the green power armour. I begin by applying the red paint to the upper third of the cloak. I allow more space for the purple as I am wanting the cloak to read as purple overall, with the darker areas being red. Just as I did on the base earlier, I use a left to right motion to push the purple paint into the red. You'll notice that I'm always pushing up into the red rather than down into the purple. The reason for this is like I mentioned, I want the cloak to predominantly read as purple with red shadows so encroaching on the red area will allow the purple to stand out more. This is by no means a paint by numbers exercise. It is messy and fluid. You have to make decisions on the fly and as a result the outcome can often be quite messy. Obviously a painter that has more experience with this technique than myself can churn out a much neater final product. However, mine is often a little messy and that is fine for what I'm using it for. I usually employ this method for base coating an area where I want there to be a subtle shift in colour that I can then build on top of. This means that by the end of it, the viewer's eyes are mainly focused on the end details rather than the wet blending, which helps just set the tone more than anything. To quickly show you what I mean, I have added some dashes and various shades of purple near the bottom of the cloak to hint at a bit of texture. 
Whilst I don't overly like the finish, I will probably go back to change it. You can see how this little highlight draws your eye, whilst the wet blend provides a more interesting base coat than if I had used a flat purple. I hope you found this video useful, and until next time, I shall see you later. Thank you.